Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Welcome to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. I'm Zoe Rothblatt, Associate Director of Community Outreach at GHLF, and our goal is to help you understand what's happening in the healthcare world to help you make informed decisions to live your best life. So today is episode two of a special three-part series focused on polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR for short. Over the course of these episodes, we'll speak with a physician and a patient who deals with PMR in their daily life so we can get a better understanding of what PMR is and the journey that patients go through to get diagnosed and treated. If you miss our first episode with Dr. Wright, please take a listen when you have time. In today's episode, we're joined by Linda Rinaldi, a PMR patient, and we'll hear from her about when she recognized symptoms, what her diagnosis was like, her treatment, and how she's feeling today. Welcome, Linda, to the Health Advocates. We're happy to have you here. So why don't you start off by introducing yourself? My name is Linda Rinaldi. I am from uh, South Jersey, and I am a criminal prosecutor. That's what I was for 26 years, but I'm now retired. And I live right outside of Philadelphia. I live in South Jersey, but I live in right outside of Philadelphia. Okay, well, I guess I'm on the other end of you. I'm from Northern Jersey, but living in New York City, so not too far. <laughs> we'll have to hang out. Um, but in the meantime, we get you virtually to learn more about your polymyalgia rheumatica diagnosis. Can you tell us a little bit about what that journey was like with getting a diagnosis and some of your initial symptoms, how long it took to even get the diagnosis? My my initial symptoms were I felt like I had exercised too much. That's how I felt. And I stopped exercising. And, you know, I went to visit my granddaughter in London and I knew I was going to get sick because she was just two. And um, I hadn't been around two year olds in a long time. And I did get sick. But as I was getting sick, I started feeling these symptoms of PMR that I didn't know that I had. And it was like I exercised too much. That's what it was like. And it was like all over your body or localized to an area? Yes. No. All over my body, from my neck down to my toes. My head was not involved, but I couldn't move my head. It took about a day or a couple of days to get a diagnosis because I called my family physician and she told me to stop the Crestor that I was taking because sometimes if you're on it too long, it causes muscle aches and can do something with your muscles. So I stopped right away. That did not do a thing. Did not do a thing. So I called her back and uh, she was stumped. She says, like, now what? Maybe you should see a rheumatologist. So I said, well, okay, I've never been to a rheumatologist, so I will go to a rheumatologist. So I called, she gave me the names of a couple people and those couple people had appointments for like six weeks away. It's like, I, I cannot live like this for six weeks. I just can't because I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't drive. I couldn't wash. I couldn't wash my hair. I couldn't brush my teeth. I couldn't take a shower. I mean, I couldn't turn my neck. I couldn't even roll over in bed. That's how bad it was. And then, yeah, obviously, like you're saying, you couldn't do any of this. Like something was telling you that that something was really wrong and that you couldn't wait six to eight weeks for a rheumatologist. So what happened? Were you able to get an appointment sooner? Did you have yes. to wait? What happened when you got to the rheumatologist? Well, first of all, I said to the woman, I cannot wait that long. I have to see somebody today or tomorrow or the next day. I, I mean, I can't move. I have to see somebody. So she gave me this one doctor and the doctor knew right away that it was PMR. But at the time, I had no idea what it was. I could just barely walk into the office there. I had to drive there, but I had to keep my hands on the lower part of the steering wheel because I couldn't raise my arms. I couldn't turn my head. It was very, very scary driving because I couldn't do anything that you would normally do when you're driving. Yeah, it's so scary to have like any symptoms up here, but also such a sudden extreme onset is so scary. Yes, that's what it was. It was a very sudden, very extreme, very scary. So what went through your head when you got the diagnosis? Was it like relief? Oh, there's a name for this confusion. Like you said, what even is this? What do I do now? I guess it was all those things. What do I do now? Yes, there is an, I was glad that there was a name for it, but I didn't know what the name was. You know, I mean, the doctor told me that it was not fibromyalgia. And she said that specifically. It's not fibromyalgia. We're talking polymyalgia. 
had no idea what she was talking about. And yeah, I think also like learning something has a name often means that there's a treatment associated with it. You know, if we can call it what it is, then we can treat it. So what happened there? Like, what was the treatment recommended to you? Or did you talk out options with the doctor? No, I didn't talk any options out. She just put me on a steroid, which I really did not want to go on because I'd heard such bad things about steroids. But that was the only option that I was given is to go on a steroid. And she started me out at 15 milligrams. And then each time that I saw her, which was every two weeks, she would taper down 14 milligrams, 13 milligrams, 11 milligrams, till we got to where we are now, which is a year later, and it's one milligram. And I'm starting to have symptoms again. So she's just this last time I saw her on November 21st, she is kicking it back up to two to three milligrams. So one day I'm taking three, one day I'm taking two, one day I'm taking three, one day I'm taking two. So if it works, it's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear you've been having symptoms again. And I kind of relate to that. I hear a feeling in your voice where you're like, it kind of like it is what it is. Like you have this diagnosis. I have inflammatory arthritis and Crohn's disease. So obviously different than what you have. But I understand like the chronic nature of the ups and downs of it and trying to figure it out. But it's really good to hear that you have a care team that you trust that's figuring it out with you as new symptoms crop up. Yes, it is really, really helpful to have that. And especially, she called me, she does my blood work like every other time that I'm there to see if I'm inflamed or if there's any change in my blood work. And there hasn't been for the past year, but I've been on the steroids. Can you tell me a little bit more about like how you describe your symptoms? I know polymyalgia rheumatica is really common, but it feels like a lot of patients don't know about it. And I wonder if maybe you tell us like a little bit more about how you explain your pain or experience your pain, if that could help some of our listeners identify it themselves. I guess I couldn't get in bed. I couldn't put the covers over me. I couldn't roll over. I had to get my son to come down and roll me over in bed because I, I couldn't roll over in bed. And I couldn't drive. I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't walk. I couldn't brush my teeth. I couldn't wash myself. I couldn't take a shower. I couldn't wash my hair. I just couldn't do anything. It didn't really hurt. It wasn't pain. I just couldn't move. Which is like almost scarier than pain, right? Because all of a sudden you can't do all these basic things in your life that you go about doing without even thinking about. Like rolling over in bed isn't something you would have ever put thought to. And now all of a sudden it's taken away from you. Those are things you don't think about. You just do them because you have to, you know. And all of a sudden I couldn't do them. And then once you started on the steroids, did those things begin to improve? Like how did you feel? Yeah, the steroids helped. Within a couple of days, they started to lessen the symptoms a little bit. And then I would say within four days, it was better in terms of the movement. I think it's like, yeah, it's a lot to experience within the span of it sounds like almost within a week to two weeks. It was like you had this extreme pain, yes, extreme inability to do things, not knowing what's happening, getting answers and then getting relief pretty quickly. Yes. Within the four or five days, I got relief. Thank God. And I was really very grateful that the rheumatologist knew what PMR was because I had never heard of it. In fact, usually when you're diagnosed with something, you hear all kinds of people have, they've had this, they've had that. They've, only one person 35 years ago had PMR. That's it. And nobody, everyone says, really? You have, what was the cause again? I have to look it up because no one has ever heard of it. So for you to say that it's common, I'm thinking, really? Is it really that common? I know. I only learned about it recently, actually. I don't think it's like okay. common in knowledge, but I do think a lot of people are living with it, either undiagnosed or just getting diagnosed. We actually did some outreach like over the summer, and I spoke to so many patients who have PMR, or, you know, experienced PMR symptoms for some time, and they had the same exact thought of like, I didn't know anyone else with this and I like scoured the internet to find people which is also you know part of the reason we're interviewing you and trying to get information out there and let people know while it may be totally scary to experience these things like it is normal like it happens to people and here is Linda sharing her story so 
Yeah. What's that like for you now to like openly share your story? And even I think a big part of what your story was that you advocated for yourself saying like something's really wrong and I need to get to the doctor now. I guess I'm just like one saying it's amazing that you self-advocated in that way because a lot of people it takes so many years to get diagnosed. And for you, you were like, I know my body. This is wrong. I'm going to get there. And maybe like what's your advice for other patients so that they can you know, feel confident to do the same? My advice is don't stop. Tell the doctor, tell as many doctors as as will listen to you what your symptoms are and advocate for yourself. You have to, because if you don't, nobody else will do it. And nobody knows your body, what you're feeling and what you're feeling going through better than you, you know, and you have to, you have to advocate for yourself. You just have to. It's so true. I mean, we're the health advocates. I totally agree. It's like you have to advocate for yourself first, then others will join along in the fight. And, you know, we're here to support you. But it really has to start with you speaking up. And it can be really challenging, um, especially like the power dynamic with a doctor and patient and insurance company and all these players in the healthcare system can make it feel hard. But know that there's a community out there that we're here and willing to help you along. Exactly. So, you know, thinking about getting that diagnosis and like you said, you didn't know anyone with it and you hadn't heard of it. Where did you go to learn more about it? I Googled it like everybody. I Googled it, you know, and then I learned so much. I had every single symptom that I guess it was an educational piece that I Googled and came across and I had every single symptom. You kind of forget how badly it is until you're reminded that, yeah, it was really, really, really bad. I mean, I could not do anything. I could not move. I could not do anything. Yeah, I really relate to that. It's like you almost protect yourself and forget what the worst of it was. Yes. But it's always a part of you. Exactly. I think it has to be a part of you because you just can't forget those symptoms when you can't move. But that's why I'm hesitating with the exercising because that's the way I feel again. And I asked the doctor specifically, is this going to come back? And she said to me, I don't know. It depends on your body. It depends. We'll see, you know, we'll taper down. We'll go through the whole procedure and we'll see where you are. And she was very disappointed when I had the symptoms again. Well, yeah, of course, it's disappointing. At the same time, it's also nice to know that, like, she's feeling the disappointment with you and (laughs) can sit in that with you a little bit. Yes, definitely. So what inspired you to start sharing your story? You know, you've done another video with us now on the health advocates. Like, What was the reasoning behind saying, let me get this out there? If I can help even one person know what the heck this is, I will help one person because one person is one person. What? That's not too many. One person is one person. And I, I've always wanted to help people that don't know, so to speak. Whatever I can do, I will do because I just don't want anybody to be in pain and not know what it is and not be able to move. Yeah, I totally agree. That's why I started sharing my story as well. Just like knowing how alone and scared I felt and not wanting others to feel the same and wanting to help reduce that experience for other people. Right. And like you're saying, if it's just one person, it makes such a difference. That's like a whole quality of life. Yes. It definitely is. And if you can help one person, then that's one person that you've helped, you know. And especially because PMR tends to get diagnosed later in life. And I think a lot of people can make excuses around like, oh, this is just part of getting older and stuff like that. So it's really important to spread the word to say, like, if something feels off to you, like it's probably off and go call the doctor. And And don't let it get to, I would say the point that I got to, which I couldn't move, but it happened so quickly that I didn't even wait. You know, I just knew, I knew that there was something wrong. Yeah. Well, Linda, thank you so much for sharing your story with me and our listeners. And like, I love the messages of hope you left us with. And like, I hope you continue to work closely with your doctor and that your symptoms lessen. I hope so too. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to The Health Advocates, a podcast that breaks down major health news of the week to help you make sense of it all. If you like this episode, please give us a rating, write a review on Apple Podcasts, and hit that subscribe button wherever you listen. It'll help more people like you find us. I'm Zoe Rothblatt. We'll see you next time.
Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Thank you.